Lastly, I would like to point out a few muscles. We're going to talk about three different groups today. We're going to talk about the lateral rotator group. We're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about the hip flexors as well as the hip AB doctors. Let's start with the most challenging one, which is the lateral rotator group. We have a multitude of muscles that help us laterally rotate our thigh. And when I talk about laterally rotating our thigh, we're talking about moving this, the thigh laterally externally or turning the foot outward. But that will be accomplished up in the thigh, the proximal thigh. All the muscles that we will talk about in this next section here are attached to the greater trochan. Around a little bit, but for our purposes, the greater trochanter is a good land. The lateral rotator group includes the piriformis muscle, the obturator internus, the gemella superior and inferior, obturator externus, and the quadratus femoris. Let's get started. The, the piriformis muscle originates at the lateral border of the sacrum on the anterior portion, and it inserts into the greater trochan. When we contract that muscle, we can see nicely how that will laterally rotate the thigh. The piriformis muscle is a fairly big muscle that has the sciatic nerve going through it very often, and very often it can mimic or create sciatic pain, which is pain going down the back of the leg. The next two ones I want to talk about are the gemellus muscle, the two gemelli. We have one on top and one on the bottom. They go from here to here. Their attachment points are here the ischial spine and then the lesser sciatic notch. Superior one is the ischial spine, inferior one is the lesser sciatic notch. They both go into the greater trochan. Now the challenging ones, obturator internus and obturator externus. The obturator internus starts at the medial area, medial border of the obturator foramen, right in here, and it wraps around the lesser sciatic notch. It makes a turn, and it wraps around the lesser sciatic notch, and it attaches onto the greater trochan. It moves, it comes out in between the superior and the inferior gemellus muscle. So the obturator internus goes from the medial uh, obturator foramen, order of the obturator foramen, wraps around the lesser uh, uh, sagging notch and attaches to the greater trochan. Again, laterally or externally rotating the thigh. The obturator externus originates essentially at the same place in the obturator internus but on the anterior portion of it. And then it goes from the anterior portion and goes straight in the back of the femur and attaches into the greater trochan. And lastly but not least here, we have the quadratus femoris. And the quadratus femoris originates right here in ischial tuberosity and it moves and goes right to this part of the greater trochan. Again, same function. When it contracts, it will externally rotate. The next muscle we're going to talk about are the hip flexors. We have two muscles there. We have a psoas that comes in a major and a minor, which is called the psoas, and we have an iliacus. The psoas originates from the vertebral bodies as well as the transverse processes of the lumbar spine and the lower thoracic spine, T12. And it moves underneath the inguinal ligament, which goes from the ASIS to the pubic, and goes and attaches into the lesser trochanter on the femur, the proximal femur. And as we can see this coming down, if it contracts, what is going to happen is we're going to raise up the thighs, so we're going to flex the hip. The second muscle in that group is the iliacus muscle, and that starts in the internal, in the iliac fossa, and again, it goes underneath the inguinal ligament and also attaches into the great, uh, lesser tubercle of the uh, femur. Also contracting, it will uh, raise the thigh. The last group today is going to be the hip AB doctors. And the muscles that do that are mainly the gluteus medius 
and the gluteus minimus. And both of those muscles will attach to the greater trochanter. And as we can sort of see how the muscles move or how the muscle direction goes, when they contract, we will have a lateral, uh, we have a, an abduction of the thigh. And now let's look at these muscles one more time, but from our model that we have, that we use to test and to study. We have piriformis right here. We have the gemella superior right here, then followed by the um, obturator internus. Inferior to that is the gemellus inferior, and then we have the quadratus femoris. We do not show the hip flexors on here, on this model. We do show the gluteus minimus on this model, right here. All right, let's look at those muscles in a cadaver. We have the gluteus maximus here, nice, as it feeds into the iliotibial tract, which is right here. You can see that very nicely, how thick that band is. We cannot see the tensor fascia lata, but it is ASIS, it's right in here. Okay. If you move that muscle out of the way, we do have the gluteus medius, and probably what also is the minimus on here. What we can see nice and prominent here is the sciatic nerve as it travels inferior. See how thick it is up here? Right under, above it, is the piriformis muscle. When we move the sciatic nerve out of the way, we can see, like it is nicely on the model, the gemella superior the gemellus inferior, and in between, the obturator internus coming out. Down in here, we have the quadricep femoris. Looking at the posterior compartment of the thigh, which are the muscles that will flex the knee. We have on the lateral side, the biceps femoris, the long head we can see is nice and attaches into the ischial tuberosity. The short head starts at the proximal, the posterior thigh. Moves into the lateral proximal leg, tibia and fibula. On the medial side, we have both the semi-tendinosis with a nice long tendon that you can see here goes all the way to about this neighborhood on the uh, medial side of the tibia and underneath it we have the semi-membranosis which down here we can really nicely differentiate the semi-membranosis from the semi-tendinosis and we can see how nice this tendon here looks and nice and round. 